Hello, I'm Cameron Martis, UTA for ATM 101, with a step-by-step -step demonstration on how to enter weather data into Excel for your investigation. If you remember from the screencast, Gathering Official Weather Data, we have already acquired the data from the internet and saved it as a text file. To analyze the weather data, we will first import the plain text data into Excel and parse it into columns. Open up Excel, click Open under the Office button, and select All Files instead of All Excel Files in the drop-down menu below the browsing window. Navigate to the text file that you saved weather data in and select it to be opened. You should then be presented with the Text Import Wizard, which we will use to break up the text into individual columns, each containing an individual observation type. On step one of the wizard, make sure the radio button Fixed With is selected. This specifies how the data is separated in the file. Click the Next button to continue. On the second screen, you have the ability to select where in the file columns are separated. Some columns are already selected by Excel automatically, but we want to modify this bit. By clicking at any position in the preview, we can create a break between columns. This break can be removed by double-clicking on it. There should be a break on the right-hand side of every visible column. The ruler on the top of the preview will guide you if the position of some of the breaks needs to be modified. There should be three sky condition columns. If these are not all separated automatically, you will have to insert breaks, which should be placed at 24, 31, and 38. If there is already one at 39, as there is here, or at 40, that is okay also. There may be a division in the middle of the visibility column between 40 and 46. If so, this must be removed. This often occurs when the visibility is a number such as 1 and 1 quarter, as we see here, and Excel tries to separate these two columns. But they are really one number, so they should not be separated. The weather column should be separated with a break between 52 and 55. There should be a break at the beginning of the altimeter setting column. If there is not, this break must be positioned at 73. There are two columns we need to separate farther, the time and the wind speed and direction. Click in the middle of the time column at position 14, leaving two digits on either side of the break. This separates the hours and the minutes. Click in the wind column, leaving three digits before and two digits after the break. At position 66, this separates the wind speed and direction. Assuming every step has been done properly, we are now ready to finish the wizard and view this separated data. The data should extend through column R, although there may occasionally be values in column S when the peak column is filled. Now we are ready to copy the data into the Excel template provided for this investigation. Notice that it contains the same three tabs that it did in the last investigation, as well as several new tabs. Select all the data, copy it, and paste it into the NWS Raw Data tab in the template. The data is now processed into a more read readable format under the NWS OBS tab and plotted on the T-graph, P-graph, and RH-graph. On the dim NWS OBS tab, you will need to enter the date, the beginning date of the month in which your observations are taking place because the National Weather Service observation do not have the month listed. They only have the day within the month. You also need to make sure this Excel sheet includes all the values in the NWS raw data. Scroll down to the end of the values in this NWS OBS sheet 
select the last row, move your cursor to the bottom right corner until a cross appears, click and drag down some distance until your values all become the same at 0 in the B column, 1016 in the C column, etc. At this point, delete all the values that are the same, leaving only the values that above it that are clearly different, ending with the last day in your observation period. The values that are different from one another are clearly real data that take from rows in the NWS raw data sheet. Whereas the values that were the same below that we deleted are taking data from rows in the MWS raw data sheet that have no data within them. We do the process that I described earlier in order to ensure that this NWS OBS sheet includes all the data that is in the NWS raw data sheet but that it does not contain any more columns with unreal data, zeros, etc. because these show up at points on the graphs that cause extra lines and other problems. You can now view the plotted data under the T-graph which plots the air temperature as a solid red line for the NWS observations. The P-graph plots the barometric pressure as a solid blue line for the NWS observations and the RH graph which plots the relative humidity the blue line with the axis on the left side and the dew point temperature the red knot line with an axis on the right side. Once you have entered your station OBS just as you did in the last investigation these will also appear on the T-graph and P-graph as I did last time so that you can compare your observations to the National Weather Service observations. If there are problems with this spreadsheet, try repeating the import process to make sure you have put the breaks in the right places. The Columns tab shows the positions that each break should have so you can track down the problem.